1256. For what purpose does the gentleman from Michigan rise? I'd like to speak. Uh, I claim the time uh, in support of the amendment. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number two, printed in House Report number 111-256, offered by Mr. Hoekstra of Michigan. Pursuant to House Resolution 746, the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Hoekstra, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Michigan. I thank the chair. Uh, I'll yield myself as much time as I shall consume. The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker. The Student Aid Fiscal Responsibility Act that's in front of us today will authorize $6.6 .6 in new mandatory taxpayer dollars to create three federal school construction programs for elementary and secondary schools. What my amendment will do is my amendment will strike these new government programs that would nationalize the school construction industry and direct the savings towards deficit reduction. You know, in the years that I've been in Congress, one of the things that we've continued to see over the years is a continued expansion of the role of the federal government uh, in K through 12 education. We saw the most massive ex expansion uh, in 2001, the passage of No Child Left Behind. No Child Left Behind has left a tremendous number of mandates, increased costs, and little improvement uh, in schools and children's performance around the country. And now, rather than giving back and yielding control, for our kids' education, back to parents, back to local schools, and back to states. Again, we're having a, another massive expansion of the federal government's involvement in K-12 through education, this time into school construction. And I'm sure the arguments will be, but you know, we need to help the schools. We need to help the states. We need to build them and give them the money to build new schools. Excuse me, where does this money come from? Well, some of this money, if not all of it, will be deficit spending, which states can't do. But in reality, if it's deficit spending, it's going to be our kids and our grandkids that are going to be paying for it. And if it's money that we collect in taxes, it's going to be money that comes from the states, comes from individuals in our local communities, comes to Washington, and then we will tell them how they can spend it. There are 27, at last count, 27 directives as to how states and local school districts will be able to spend their own money. School districts must ensure that a certain percentage of the school construction materials meet green standard. School districts must compile a report describing the project funded under the bill and seven other reporting requirements. School districts should educate students about the school construction project being constructed at their school. I'm assuming if they're going to have to be required to teach their students there's going to have to be some reporting requirement saying I educated my kids at my school about what this project was about and they're going to fill it out send it to the state and send it to Washington meaning that for every construction dollar that we spend maybe 60 65 cents of it will actually be spent on construction the other 35 to 40 cents of that dollar will be spent on reporting requirements applying for it, meeting federal requirements uh, and those types of things this is a bad idea. We will not end up building more schools. We will not end up having more construction. We will have less construction because the federal bureaucracy and federal bureaucrats will end up siphoning off a lot of this money for their purposes to make sure that the local school districts do what Washington, what Washington bureaucrats want them to do and not what needs to be done in their local school districts. This is a bad idea. I encourage my colleagues to support this amendment and give this money and reduce the deficit, take some of the burden off of our kids and our grandkids in the future. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time. I'll yield myself as much time as I shall consume. Mr. Speaker, Washington has helped enough. My local school districts are saying, stop. We don't need more of Washington's help. You gave us no child left behind with great fanfare, promises of all this money. And all we got were rules and regulations which are taking valuable time and resources away from educating our kids and putting it into bureaucracy and trying to follow ill-advised guidelines, mandates, and directives from Washington, D.C. 
they say, stop, we don't need any more of this Washington help where you come into our school districts, where you come into our communities, and if you're going to pay for these bills, which most likely will not be paid for, but if they were, you come into our communities and you extract $6 billion out, and then you force us to apply to get that money back, knowing that the money will be appropriated or allocated by who has power in Washington, D.C., and who has the quote-unquote most influence, and it will be distributed unfairly. They don't need that kind of help anymore where we take their money, allocate it back to them after they've applied for it, tie all sorts of mandates and restrictions to it, so we shrink the purchasing power of that dollar. And then we have the federal government is going to come in, this wonderful Department of Education will come in, and they will audit us to make sure that we spend the money exactly the way that they told us to spend it. That kind of help is no longer helping our kids. It never did help our kids. We're failing our kids with this legislation. We're shrinking the purchasing power of education dollars, not enhancing it. This kind of Washington help needs to stop.